No, we are starting the second week of the school, new week and the new courses are starting. The first speaker today is Professor Anton Talmayer from Luxembourg University. He will speak about Brownian motion, evolving geometries and entropy formulas. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction and in particular to the organizers, all of the organizers for the invitation to uh, give a series of lectures at uh, this uh, place. So if you look at my title, you see Brownian motion, which uh, definitely uh, has a connection with probability theory. There are evolving geometry. This is differential geometry. There is also entropy, which is mathematical physics and so on. So a lot of things will come uh, together in my uh, uh, series of talks. Uh, I have to apologize uh, uh, first for the delay and secondly to uh, give a uh, presentation with a beamer. Usually I don't like uh, such uh, talks, but over the weekend when I tried to organize uh, things, I realized there are so many uh, notions I have to refer to and most of or some of them you may have already known and uh, it may be better to switch between blackboard and uh, 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 slides here. So it has the advantage you can also see uh, my affiliation it's U uh, University of Luxembourg and in case you are not aware of it, uh, there is a new university in Luxembourg since, meanwhile, almost 12 years. The idea is to build up a uh, uh, research university uh, in Luxembourg, so it's not yet finished. Uh, and uh, uh, later this year, we will move to the new campus, which has been an, uh, an investment of more than 1 billion euro. So uh, to see such sums in Europe going to science is uh, quite amazing. And so if you have a chance to visit us uh, in Luxembourg, you are most welcome. At the moment, we are still growing, but together with postdocs, we are already about 50 people. So it's no longer so small. Well, uh, I changed uh, a bit the program uh, from what I've realized uh, last week. Uh, Many or most of you have a very good background in dynamical systems, also in probability theory and so on, but probably not so much in stochastic analysis, and in particular stochastic analysis on manifolds. And uh, so today I will give you a crash course in uh, what might be called stochastic calculus on manifolds uh, or stochastic uh, flows. Uh, just to set up a bit the background of what uh, is needed uh, later on. And then I will continue tomorrow with uh, evolving manifolds, then I will discuss uh, Ricci flow heat equations and the Ricci flow functional inequalities and finally entropy uh, formula. Well, uh, to get uh, started, uh, just to uh, show you my notion, M is a differentiable manifold, and for me everything is smooth. Yeah, so uh, if I say differentiable, it always means C infinity. I'm not interested in technical uh, points. So everything is smooth except, of course, the Brownian motions. And they are... Uh, as ugly as or as nice as usual. And so here's my notion. I take the tangent bundle over M and uh, the space of vector fields will be denoted gamma T of M. So these are the sections of the tangent uh, bundle. So for each point X, A of X lies in the tangent space uh, to the point X. Yeah, that's the usual uh, setting. And I will always identify vector fields 
with derivations. So for me, a vector field is a mapping from the functions to the functions, which is linear and has the property that is uh, it's a derivation. Yes. So the identification is in the usual way. A of a function f, so A of f should be a function at the point x while you take this tangent vector and transport it with the differential of the function f. Well, of course, there is a dynamical point of view to vector fields. So you can look at the corresponding uh, uh, flow. So you start at the point x, for instance, and uh, look at this equation. At each point, you have a direction, and you go along this uh, direction. And in this way, you get the usual equation for a flow to a vector field. And what does it mean? This means if you compose things with uh, smooth functions, and in particular with uh, uh, compactly supported smooth functions, you end up with this equation. So here on the right-hand side, you have A applied to F, the vector field applied to this function. And uh, the left-hand side, well, the, the F puts everything to R, so it's just the derivative with respect to T. I take here compactly supported things because, as you know, flows may not live for all time. They can explode in finite times, but when they explode, they are outside of the support of my function. So this always makes sense to write down. Well, if you integrate this uh, uh, equation, you get the following here. So you have uh, f at uh, phi t of x. This is the point where you are at time t when starting in x minus f of the initial point minus this integral gives you zero. Well, just one point, uh, well, this is usually if you fix an x and look at the behavior or the dependence in t, this is called flow curve. And uh, by uh, uh, look, uh, defining ptf, f composed with phi t, you can see that you re can recover the vector field from the flow. So if you know the flow, you can uh, uh, recover the corresponding vector field. Well, why am I telling you this? Uh, what I would like to do, or the first question I would like to discuss is, this works for, uh, for vector fields, uh, but uh, can we do the same or something similar also for second order differential operators. So typical second order differential operators on the manifold will be of this form. Of course, we can do it more generally, but I will stick to this Hermander form vector field plus a sum of squares of vector fields. Yeah? So just to remind you how does this work, if you have A, A, I, Uh, squared applied to f, well, this is you uh, take a i, apply this to f, this is a function, and you apply one more time the vector field. Yeah, so, how this is the way how this uh, uh, works. And uh, the question is, is there a notion of a flow to L? You will miss, miss say first, well, that's a stupid question. What do I mean for a vector field? I have at each point a direction that can go along this uh, direction. And what uh, should I uh, do uh, here with uh, these uh, uh, sum of squares? And it turns out, indeed, there is a flow which uh, has very nice uh, properties, and, uh, but what one has to do is the flow lines are no longer deterministic. They depend now on an additional parameter, which is a random parameter, so there are stochastic processes. Uh, so, uh, the, so here is now, I start at the point x, 
and this is the position where I'm at time t. This will be a random variable, so some, I fix uh, some probability space with a filtration. This is an increasing sequence of uh, sub-sigma algebras such that xt is measurable with respect to ft. So ft will be the events which are available at time t. Yeah? And I call this flow process, just in generalization to flow curve I had uh, before. Uh, or more common is to call it L diffusions. If, well, what should I write? Uh, if you remember the integrated formula I had at the beginning, I took a test function. I looked at f at the position at time t when starting at x minus, and here I had a vector field. For the vector field, I write now L. Yeah? Of course, uh, if L, if my uh, second order uh, partial differential operator is of first order, it's just a vector field, then it will be the same thing. So uh, if I have here a vector field, I should say this here is zero. Yeah? But uh, it turns out uh, that would be too much to ask that this here is zero. And the right condition is that this is a martingale. And I should uh, remind you what is a martingale. A martingale is a process which is purely fluctuating, which does not have any drift. Yeah? So in explicit terms, that means if you take this process and you look at the increments from S to T, yeah, then uh, you get exactly what I wrote here. And it would be too much to say this has to be zero, but if you take a conditional expectation with respect to the sigma algebra F of S, yeah, I told you these are the events which are available at time S. Yeah, so if you look at the behavior of this thing, only taking the information which is available at the beginning of the interval, then it should be zero. Yeah. So maybe just uh, a small reminder about conditional expectations. What does uh, this mean? If you have a probability space, yeah, and let's say we take uh, a sub-sigma algebra in F. Then, of course, you may look at the L2 functions of omega, uh, well, let's write it like that, L2 omega F uh, P. And you may also look at the L2 functions omega, but now you take the smaller sigma algebra and you restrict your measure to C. Then you can immediately check this is a closed subspace, a closed linear subspace in a Hilbert space. So if you like, you have here your L2P, and inside sitting here is the L2P restricted to C. These are the L2 functions which are C measurable, measurable with respect to the smaller sigma algebra. So if I give you now some element in L2P, what you can do is you can look at the orthogonal projection onto this space. You get a unique element which is called the conditional expectation with respect to C of this uh, uh, element X. Yes? So what you do is uh, you project it down to a subspace uh, making a random variable x measurable with respect to a smaller sigma algebra. So you, look, look, you take a, a coarser look at what uh, you uh, had uh, before. And this is exactly what we are doing here. So uh, if you project it 
to what you know at the beginning of the interval. Then this thing here will look exactly as you know from deterministic flow lines to a vector field. Okay? Well, uh, just some simple consequences. Uh, we have that this uh, NTF uh, of X is a martingale. So if you take expectations, and of course the usual expectation is nothing but the conditional expectation with respect to the trivial sigma algebra. Yeah. Then you see that uh, if you have a martingale, the expectations do not depend uh, on t. So uh, remember, here this at time zero, this is zero. So expectation of this thing here at time t is the same as expectation at time zero, which gives you zero. Yeah. So uh, what you see is uh, if you uh, take expectation of what you had before, you get this equation. Yeah. Now the right-hand side obviously is differentiable in t. So uh, you uh, get this formula, take derivative of this, well, it will be, turn out to be a semi-group, you get pt of L of f. And so in particular, if you take the derivative at time t equals zero, you can recover your operator from the flow. Yeah? So if you know the stochastic flow, then uh, you can use the formula as before, the difference is you have to average over all paths. Yeah? So this means you take the point small x, you run your process up to time t, you evaluate the function f at this random point, and then you average over all possible trajectories. Yeah? And then you take derivative. Right? Okay. Uh, well, that's uh, just uh, what... I said, and as before, a technical points, well, we already know from deterministic flow. In general, we cannot expect that they are defined for all times, so there may be explosion in finite times, so there may be some random time, usually that's a stopping time, depending on x, which gives the maximal lifetime of my flow. Well, uh, I give you a first example. Uh, to remind you of Ito's formula. So if you take now as our manifold just Rn, and uh, for the operator, the standard Laplace operator, and well, usually uh, uh, I speed up my uh, process by the factor uh, two, so Brownian motion for me is always related to uh, Laplacian, then the E2 formula tells me what I get if I compose xt with a function. You see I have two terms here. This is a uh, differential of uh, uh, so a stochastic uh, differential. This is with respect to dt. But this is not important. The, the important point is this here. If you take f of xt minus f of x0, this here I said if you integrate it, it will be a martingale. This goes away. So there is only the Laplacian staying. Yeah? So it means if I subtract the integral over the Laplacian uh, of, of f, at x s d s integrated from zero to t, I will get a martingale. And this is precisely my uh, notion of a stochastic flow to the operator given here as the Laplacian. So you quite often hear people saying Brownian motion is the stochastic flow to the Laplacian. This is exactly what this slide uh, shows you. Well, uh, you may say, uh, what are these uh, things uh, good for? And uh, to uh, 
give you a bit an idea, I will first just assume that we have such an object, which I called uh, stochastic flow, and show you some consequences. Yeah? For instance, look at the following. Suppose you want to solve the Dirichlet problem. So that means uh, you take some domain D, and on the boundary, you give you a function. You want to find a continuation of this fu function you have on the boundary. Well, I take here continuous, but I can do it much more general, to the interior, and there it should be harmonic, or L harmonic. So L of U in the interior should be zero, and it should be the right, should have the right boundary condition. Well, let's suppose we have such a, a stochastic uh, flow for some technical reasons. I will take smaller subdomains dn, which are exhausting uh, d from uh, inside, and I take my process, maybe starting at x, and I run it up to the first time it's exiting dn. Yeah? So that will happen at the time x, uh, x tau n of x, x. So I start at x, and I run the process up to the first time I hit the boundary of uh, dn. Uh, and, well, if n goes to infinity, this will uh, go up to the first exit time of the process uh, from the boundary, the first hitting time of the boundary when starting uh, at x. Well, now, uh, coming back to the definition, and now you see why I took these uh, dn's. I can, for each n, I can choose un, yeah, such that un on this domain dn agrees with the original u. Let's suppose we have a, a solution to the Dirichlet problem, and that un is still compactly supported uh, in dn. Yeah. Then my functions un uh, are test functions, and so I can go back to the defining property of my flow. I know this here is a martingale, right? So, uh, I, if this is a martingale, I stop it at the time when it's exiting dn. It will still be uh, a martingale. So, from what I said, I can take expectations of this here, will give me zero. But be aware, L of u n, well, up to uh, at x r, and r is less than the first exit time of d n. But uh, L of u n is on this on d n uh, equal the same as L of u, and L of u is zero. So this thing here goes away, and I get this formula here. Or u of x, so if I have a solution to the Dirichlet problem, it must have this property. Yeah. Now, uh, the right-hand side depends on n. I ship n to infinity, so uh, while well, u is certainly bounded, uh, because it's continuous on uh, the bar, so I can use dominated convergence, and I get uh, the formula here on the right-hand side. This formula still depends on t, yeah? so I can also ship t to infinity. And here I make an hypothesis. Let's suppose that the first exit time uh, uh, tau x is finite. So the process will exiting when starting at x in finite times my domain. It will not stay forever in t. So let's make this hypothesis. Then, if we uh, take the limit as t goes to infinity, well, this here, we have continuous processes, just uh, goes to x at the time of exiting. 
But there I'm sitting, the X, tall X, there I'm sitting on the boundary. And on the boundary, my U equals uh, uh, phi. So uh, I can replace here uh, the U by phi. Yeah? And so what uh, we uh, found is uh, the following, that uh, uh, my uh, solution U uh, of X, if there is such a solution, has this representation. So you take the boundary function, uh, let uh, 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 your L diffusion starting at X running up until it hits the boundary, and then take the expectation over all phi's. Excuse me. Yes. I come to that yeah, in, in just one, one moment. Yeah? Uh, so what it means is uh, I have, uh, I recovered that my u of x equals this expression and it's just an integral of, of, over the boundary function with respect to this exit measure. So that means you uh, take, if you have d here and you take some part on the boundary, then uh, starting at x, you uh, take uh, mu of x is the probability that your uh, diffusion will exit d via a. Yeah? And with respect to this measure, I have to integrate. Yeah? Well, uh, this is interesting because what we just uh, showed uh, with uh, more or less no work is uh, no matter what the manifold is, what your space is, no matter what your operator is, no matter what the boundary is, if there is a solution yeah, and the corresponding L diffusion will exit the domain in finite times, then the solution will be unique yeah, and it will come by this formula here, u of x equals that. And this is quite uh, a remarkable statement uh, already. So if you have any chance to uh, solve the problem, there is only one way to do it, right? And uh, well, uh, we have this hypothesis and as uh, you asked, what does it mean? Well, it means, uh, or it's basically a question, that the operator should not be too degenerate. Yeah? So if you start at x, you should not stay in uh, d for all time. Yeah? Of course, if the operator is zero, you will not move at all. Yeah? But it might also be possible that if you have a very degenerate operator that you do not go out. Yeah? And for the exercise session, I prepared some cases where you can look at the uh, behavior. And of course, if this is the only way how to solve the problem, you may say, well, let's define or look at this function. Then we have to see whether it satisfies the right boundary condition. And for that, you will need that the exit time uh, when starting at x goes to zero uh, in a weak sense, uh, uh, weakly, if you approach a boundary uh, point. Yeah? Then, you, uh, then you, uh, this function will then have the right uh, uh, boundary uh, conditions and uh, you have to check uh, this is uh, differentiable for that you use techniques uh, available in uh, stochastic analysis and uh, you uh, get uh, uh, the solution to the Dirichlet problem. Of course, this formula you can easily com uh, implement on a computer. So what you do, you start in X uh, and you simulate the trajectory of your diffusion. So, uh, and uh, for instance, uh, take uh, uh, 
uh, small ants, you let them run off at the point X, and you kill them as soon as they reach the boundary. And you do this for some time, then you look at the distribution of the dead ends on the boundary. This gives you your measure, and this you use uh, to uh, approximate this integral. Well, OK, uh, a second uh, a very brief uh, application, if we have uh, uh, such an, uh, an object which I called L diffusion, we can immediately solve the heat equation. So this is the, pro the parabolic problem, time derivative of function u equals the operator applied to u, specifying some uh, initial condition. Uh, in this uh, situation, fix capital T and red, let uh, time uh, run. Uh, backwards, then this is a space-time process, so xt is on m, here is a time running backward, and it's easy to check this will be uh, diffusion to, the op to this parabolic uh, uh, operator, and then just do the same thing as before. If you suppose that, you're, that there is no explosion, that uh, when starting at x, your process uh, lives uh, forever, you uh, go back to the definition of the, an L process, substitute this here. Now, on the, take, looking at this integral, you have L minus uh, time derivative, but applied to u. So if u is a solution to the heat equation, this will be zero. So you find the formula uh, here that ux at capital T is uh, this expectation. Then you ship T to capital T, yeah, which you can do because U uh, was supposed to be a bounded uh, solution. So this uh, converges then if uh, small t goes to capital T to x capital T and t minus small t goes to zero but u at time zero is just my f. Yeah. So uh, I just showed uh, under the simple hypothesis that there is no explosion uh, for my uh, uh, diffusion. I have uniqueness of uh, bounded solutions to the heat equation. Again, no assumptions on L. Uh, nothing, just a simple observation that, or it all comes from the fact that, uh, uh, or the defining property of an L diffusion uh, 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 that I get a martingale. Well, now the question how to construct stochastic flows. Up to now, I did not say uh, anything. Uh, about uh, that, and of course, uh, you know how to construct deterministic flows. You have to solve differential equations, ordinary differential equations, and here you have to solve stochastic differential equations. Yeah? So very briefly, what is a stochastic differential equation? Well, this is a, uh, an abstract uh, definition. So uh, an SDE, stochastic differential equation on M, this will be a pair of a mapping M times E uh, to the tangent bundle, which should be a homomorphism of vector bundles over M. That just means if you project it down to M, you get the identity. Yeah. So this is, the, this is the trivial bundle, E is... Uh, take Rn, yeah? and uh, this is the tangent bundle, right? And uh, I write it like this, Xe goes to A of Xe, uh, and uh, that means uh, if I fix uh, 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 X uh, and look at this uh, as uh, uh, depending on E, I get a linear map from E to the tangent space Txm. Yeah. If I uh, fix E 
and look at the dependence on x, I get a vector field. If I substitute here x, yeah, I get a tangent vector in Txm. Well, uh, more uh, coming closer to SDE, we write such uh, a system also as dx equals a of x, should be capital X here. Uh, and this is what people call Stratonovich differential. For the moment, that's just completely formal. Yeah, I have not yet explained what this means. This is just a symbolic writing of what I said uh, before. Well, if, uh, we, uh, if E has the dimension R, we may take a basis, then uh, from what I said, if uh, AI is now this vector field I get from the standard coordinate vector EI, here, I can write it in symbolic way like that. Yeah. Well, but uh, what does it mean? I have to tell you what is a solution to such an STE. I will not explain what dx is. x will be a process uh, on the manifold. So I uh, explain only what is the composition of f with some function or with a test function. And the meaning is this here. Take f of x t, that should be f of the initial point, plus, and uh, you uh, apply the differential of f to uh, the, this a here. So uh, look, I wrote again, uh, uh, this is sitting in e, then a of x go goes to the tangent space, you apply the differential, you come back to r. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, very quickly, the most uh, important example is the following. Take for E the R plus one dimensional Euclidean space. For Z, take the first component uh, T, and the other components are a standard Brownian motion on R. Uh, R. Then a look at uh, such a homomorphism of vector bundle, write it in this R plus, in terms of this R plus one uh, vector fields, and then you end up with an equation like this here. Yeah? So if there are no AI, this would go away, then uh, you get something you uh, probably uh, would uh, have uh, seen before. So this is always capital X, that's the process. Uh, that would just be the flow to the vector field A0. And you may work it out uh, what uh, this uh, tells you. And uh, this has been the defining property. Then uh, Stratonovich differential we convert to Ito, and then we get an AI squared. And so the upshot is the following. We see if we have a solution, then this here will be a martingale, which tells you that solutions to my SDE will be stochastic flows to this Hermander type sum of square operator. So here it is again. Uh, if uh, you solve such a Stratonovich type uh, uh, equation, you will get diffusion to this operator, right? And uh, there is a general theorem about existence of solution that tells you basically if you fix an initial condition, then there is a unique solution uh, living up to some maximal lifetime theta. And uniqueness holds if you have another solution which lives up to a time psi. Then psi must be less or equal than the maximal lifetime. And on the interval where both solutions are defined, they agree. So just uh, 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 take this as information that we can solve uh, 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 
uh, as the uh, uh, ease and construct uh, such uh, processes. So of course, if we say now Brownian motion on M are L diffusions to the Laplace Beltrami operator, we can always write the Laplace Beltrami operator as a sum of squares, so we can construct Brownian motions. Yeah? But the bad news is there is no canonical way of writing the Laplacian as a sum of squares. Yeah. And uh, this requires uh, to go to the frame bundle. I think I have still five minutes. Still five minutes. Okay, so uh, very, very quickly, look at the bundle of orthonormal frames over M. So at each uh, uh, point X, you associate uh, the frames in uh, the tension space uh, to this uh, point, where a frame is, uh, for me, a linear isometry from Rn to the tension space. Yeah. So uh, uh, I get the frame when applying it to a basis, to the standard basis in uh, Rn, I get this frame. And the connection, as you know, gives us a splitting of uh, this uh, vector bundle over P, so we get a notion of a horizontal lift, and in terms of the horizontal lift, we can decompose the tangent bundle in a vertical subbundle and a horizontal uh, subbundle. So for each U in the tangent space to the frame bundle, I have a horizontal uh, space at uh, uh, U, which I uh, just uh, get uh, by, uh, uh, by lifting things uh, up here to uh, T uh, of P, and the vertical space is canonically given, is uh, everything which goes by the differential of pi down to zero. So what I have here is a way of horizontal lift. I can lift tangent vectors on M up to the frame bundle. Yeah? And the results will be lie in the horizontal uh, sub-bundle, uh, and I get an isomorphism like that. The point is uh, that the frame bundle is a trivial bundle. The frame uh, or the tangent uh, bundle to the frame bundle is trivial over the frame bundle, which is, of course, not true for M uh, itself. For instance, the horizontal subbundle is uh, trivialized by the standard horizontal vector fields, which you get just by lifting up these basis vectors to. Uh, 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 P, and uh, in terms of uh, these standard horizontal vector fields, you may look at uh, the operator sum of squares here, Hi sum of squares, which is the horizontal Laplacian on the orthonormal frame bundle. Yes? Well, this is uh, again. Uh, uh, a manifold, so, and I have an operator uh, which is sum of squares, so I know how to define a flow to such an operator. So I solve the, this equation here no, no longer on M but on the frame bundle. Yeah? And then I project the solution down to M. Yes? And I get a pro to, I start with Z, I get U, and the projection down to the manifold will be X, and actually I can recover the Z from the X, but this uh, is uh, not uh, so uh, important. And, uh, well, in this way, I uh, get out of uh, X here, which is my driving process of the SDE, uh, something on the manifold, which uh, uh, I call stochastic development, along with U, which moves 
by parallel transport along the trajectories uh, of uh, X. And here is uh, the important thing. Z is a Brownian motion if and only if this U on the frame bundle is an L diffusion to the horizontal uh, or to Bochner's horizontal Laplacian uh, on the third equivalent condition, if you project it down to the manifold, you will get Brownian motion. Well, here probably uh, one picture tells you more than a lot of formulas. We started with Z living on Rn, yeah? Then uh, taking a frame here, we identify Rn with the tangent space at uh, some point x on the manifold. Yeah? Then this uh, trajectory of Z lives in the tangent space. What we are doing is now we roll the manifold without slipping along this path here, and we get a trace on the manifold. And in that way, the original frame we used to identify our n and tension space at this point moves along the curve by parallel transport. Well, if this here would uh, be a differentiable uh, pass, uh, this is a classical procedure. You may say, well, um, our paths uh, are nowhere differentiable if this is a Brownian uh, motion. But uh, how we did it was to replace ordinary differential equation by stochastic differential equation. Yeah. And as I said, this gives also parallel transport. So the U was uh, uh, taking values in the frames, so it, uh, you uh, take uh, uh, a tangent vector at uh, xs, uh, go uh, back to rn and apply u. Yeah, that gives you uh, the... Uh, okay. okay. Well, I think time is over, so thanks a lot, and sorry for rushing a bit at that.